worship the Lord. It is good to worship our King. Right in the middle of the work week. Just to worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Turn to three or four people. Let them know you're happy to see them in the Lord's house today. God bless you. You may be seated. Just for a moment, I, we're going to stand in a moment, but I'm going to let you sit down for a second. First of all, uh, related to the camp cleanup day, we need some men to help us, okay? And we don't have a huge job. We're just helping with the, uh, the, what we call the canteen where they serve uh, refreshments and burgers and fries. It's not a huge place, it's, but uh, we do need some men to help us. So if you're able to help us, and we might need to move a refrigerator, a refrigerator or two, we need some men to help us with that. Do we have any men in the house that would be able to help us with camp cleanup? Okay, thank you. We've got a, couple, a few men here that could help us out. Brother Ray, thank you. Thank you. So I've counted five men, I believe that are able to help us, and I certainly do appreciate that. And uh, I, I, I know that camp is important to all of us, so we want to do that. And we are very excited to have little Malachi with us. Malachi Smith, why don't you stand up, Brian? Show us Malachi. <laughs> Amen. So good to have the Smiths here. And we're very thankful also uh, uh, the Thompson family had a beautiful baby girl. And so we are tremendously blessed to have uh, two, new, two brand new little babies 
Our church is absolutely teeming with babies. So, in our new church building, this, the nursery will be larger than the sanctuary, I think. <laughs> but we're, we're very grateful for that. And uh, I just am so very thankful to have Brother and Sister Shock with us all the way from Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, they are incredible leaders. I have admired these people from a distance for many, many years. And to have the privilege to have these people speaking into my life and to the life of our pastoral team is just awesome, incredible. And they've been a blessing to us. Of course, Sister Shock did an outstanding job speaking at, at our Mother's Day service. And then the last few days, they've been investing in our pastor team, one-on-ones, and then also uh, meeting with our pastor team together. And they are taking us to the next level. And I'm so very grateful. These people are a treasure to our fellowship. And now they are giving their time, their full time, to developing leaders all across the world. And we're grateful for that. And Brother Shock is coming tonight to bring the word of the Lord. Would you stand in honor of the man of God? And Brother Shock, we are delighted to have you here. Why don't we just give the Lord praise? Can we do that? Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a privilege it is to be back at this, at this wonderful church. It's just a great experience, and you actually feel welcome here. That's a good thing. When you travel around all kinds of churches, believe me, that is a good thing. And to be able to connect with your pastoral team, just tremendous people. And then, of course, the Sotos, um, they're some of the sharpest amongst us in our entire organization. And I, I thank God for that. You're very, very blessed. It's very obvious things are moving forward here. And I may have said this before whenever I was here. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm just feeling a little more comfortable this time. Uh, it's kind of the advice I have for churches like this that you really got a good thing going as long as nobody does anything stupid. <laughs> so, you're, you know, things are really going good here. So don't anybody do anything stupid. God's got great things for you. Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2, 5 through 9. That will be our, our text scripture. And we'll talk about a, a subject that I feel is extremely Extremely important. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. I want to speak tonight about the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. I believe, uh, I, I believe that the most recent key word that the Spirit has been speaking to me is position. Position. If we will position ourselves... And part of what I will do tonight, or in that, the main thing of what I'll do tonight, we've got to position our minds. We, we've got to have the mind of Christ. So if we could close our eyes and lift our hands to heaven, could you pray for a personal revelation to come to you through the Word? God, I'm praying that even as I, I speak, that you will give me personal revelation, greater revelation of your mind. We've got to have your mind. Our minds limit us. Our minds frustrate us. But if we could have your mind, then there would be so many things that would, that would settle in our spirits if we could get our mind to be connected with you. Now we believe that you're going to help us with that tonight and let it be done in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. God bless you as you're seated. We indeed uh, are God's plan for today. And God working through man 
has always been his plan, and that is plan A. There may be a plan B, but I sure don't see where there would be a plan B. Now, I, I'm not God. If, if, if we all fail, then I, I don't know what he may decide to do. But we know right now that God working through man is his plan. And to please him and to be all that he intends for us to be, we must have his mind. And that's the reason why the battle is for the mind, because the mind is the control center. Now let me just say right now, this is not a mind over matter. This is not a motivational speech tonight. This is the Word of God. And we've got to have his mind. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5, it proves that the battle is for the mind. And here's what it says. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now it speaks of pulling down strongholds and then look what immediately follows this. Casting down imaginations. Now we've gone to the mind. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought. Now here we are with the mind again. Every thought brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but, and I work very hard on my mind staying right. But, but I, don't, I don't want a helmet put on my head right now with wires, and everybody watches every thought I've had this week. And I, I mean, and I work hard on it. You know, have you ever wondered where did that thought come from? And then at some point, you just realize hell. I mean, I mean, <laughs> there was no other place that it could have come from. And this should show us the power of the mind. And, and this should show us that the goal is every thought to be brought in obedience with Jesus Christ. Now, now, this is the reason why some people never walk victoriously. It's because they have the wrong goal. You, you can't have the wrong goal and get to the right place. And so there are many people that they just have as a goal, I want my mind to be good. You know, I, I, want, I want to, uh, to just hit high percentages with my thought life. And that's the wrong goal. The goal is every thought. The goal is being that every thought would be brought under the captivity and into obedience with God. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so we know that our thought life is directly connected to how fruitful we will be now and eternal victory later. And so we must control our minds, but we can only do this through the power of the Spirit. Now let me just stop right here and just make a statement that we need to all have in our mind. You're not going to control your mind with your flesh. It's not going to happen. There are one of the most frustrating things... Of, of pastoring for so many years was seeing people thinking they could work it out under their own power. That's one of the most frustrating things. You've already lost. You can never win that battle. And it takes the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the reason why we say things like, be sure and be in worship. And, and when you come to church, plug in. Why? We've got to have the power of the Spirit. We know we will never be sharp enough. We'll never have it enough together. And our New Year's resolutions are not going to last on an authority and dominion level. It's going to take us saying, every thought 
I'm going to have the mind of Christ. My mind is going to be a place for the Spirit of God, but it's going to take the power of God if I'm going to be able to keep my mind where my mind needs to be. Amen, somebody. So it's impossible to separate our actions from our thoughts, and Satan's doorway is our mind. And our thoughts fuel our action. And if we dwell on trash, we will feel and we will act like trash. I would, I would talk to people and they, they'd, you know, I'm having problems with my mind. I've got things in my mind. And so i just start talking to them. Well, what are you watching? You know, what are you reading? What, what are you listening to? And then they'd kind of look a little weird. And I'm saying, no, I, I mean, do you want me to help you? Or do you, or do you just want somebody to listen and you feel good? For a minute. I mean, I can do either. I, can, I, can, I used to start asking people this. Do you want to feel good for 30 minutes or do you want life change? I can help you with either. So, okay, now you want life change. You're having problems with your mind, right? Yes. Well, what are you watching? Go ahead, tell me. It's obviously bad. For, for, for everything that is going on in, in your... It has to be bad. It can't be good the way, the way you're struggling with all of this. And so then when we start breaking it down, I'm like, yeah, trash. Yeah, trash. Mm -hmm, trash. Right. Trash. Uh, Pastor Soto, I, I was preaching one time at our church, and I said, look, I said, now let's just go over here and, and deal with this. There is a name for people that watch horror movies, and that name is Stupid. That, that is the name right there. If, I mean, you're opening yourself up to a spirit world. You don't read your horoscope. I'm not trying to pass you. I'm just talking common sense. You know, you don't read your horoscope. Who cares? You, I mean, you, we're not even supposed to even get near that stuff. And then we wonder, man, I don't have peace. I guess not. You, you can't have peace. You can't ingest trash and have peace. You can't do it. You can't do it. We're going to pray for you. We're going to love you. you. You know, keep on taking in trash. And we're just hoping that some Sunday, the power of God is going to hit you in such a way that you're going to be convinced, I ain't doing trash anymore. I'm done with trash. I, 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 don't, I don't want trash anymore. Well, I'm telling you, whenever we understand that it's thought, action, habit, lifestyle. That's what it is. Our thoughts produce action. Our consistent action uh, produces habits. And, and our habits, it becomes our lifestyle. But when we start deciding that my mind is for Him, and I want the power of the Spirit... And I'm going to have my mind under the power and direction of the Holy Ghost. But church, it takes consistent focus on the Spirit. Now, I, you know, I know that you're always hearing things like you really need to pray every day. And, uh, and you really need to be in the Word of God. And you've got a nice pastor and a nice pastor's wife. And you've got nice leaders. And, and, and you know, and that's good. That's good that everybody's nice. But if you're not in the Word, you're dying. If you're not praying, you're not breathing. I used to tell people, you don't have to read your Bible, but on the days you don't read your Bible, don't eat. And you don't have to pray, but on the days you don't pray, don't breathe. And then you'll get the picture. You cannot live without prayer and the Word of God. You cannot live. You can't live. And so I'd come along beside people and I'd say, come on, you want to live? Uh, yes, well then, if you'll do these things, you can live. You know? And then other people, I asked one person one time, and I hope I'm not going too far. Maybe I'm feeling too comfortable here. I, I, you wouldn't do this because you're nicer than I am. But I looked at one person, I looked at one person in our church one time, I said, you want to go to hell, don't you? Really, you have to. You have to want to go to hell. You You do. You have, you want to go there, don't you? You want to burn up. I said, what you need to do, you need to go home, set the oven on 400, stick your hand in, and keep it in there as, as long as you can, and then you'll get a clue about where you're headed. It's like we don't have to live like this. We don't have to take this stuff. We don't have to live to where we don't have power. 
We, we can say, God, help me cut the trash. My mind does not belong on all that. I'm not giving my mind to that. I'm not letting my mind run down that lane. It's over. By the help of God, I will have a spiritual mind. I'm going after every thought, not one out of ten. I'm going after every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And your life will change. It'll change. You, this church is going to love you whether you change or not. But I'm telling you, your life changes when you decide, I'm going to have the mind of Christ. My mind belongs to His Spirit. Therefore, the issue is, if it's going to take my mind off of His Spirit, if it's going to put my mind in the gutter, then I'm cutting that out. I don't have to have a Pentecostal list. I don't have to have a pastor telling me, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. No, I'm going to judge it by what allows my mind to be free in the Spirit. I'm going, after, I'm going after a life to where I can have peace when I lay my head down at night. I'm going after a life that, that my mind is clear and it's under the power of the Spirit. But it's going to take the Spirit for that to happen because we cannot put our minds on autopilot. Because the enemy is after our mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We need a revelation that it is indeed reasonable to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. We need a revelation that the Word of God says that's reasonable. That's not unreasonable. The world tells us it's unreasonable. But the Word tells us it's reasonable. And then says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Well, how does this happen? By the renewing of your mind. Our mind has to be renewed. It has to continue to be renewed, and then we can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What happens is, is our minds can become dangerously conformed to this world. You know, I, I remember the first time that I saw a video, a, a clip on my computer of ISIS blowing away that, that, um, that suburban with that family in it. Did any of you remember? I mean, it was like, it was when ISIS first came on and they were just driving down the road and they took their submachine guns and just blew this family away. Then, then I remember seeing the, the first uh, time that they beheaded a group of people. You know, and, and man, I mean, when I, when I saw it, it's like, Man, it got in my mind. It bothered me. It was hard. It was hard to even think. And then the first time they, you know, was drowning people in cages. And I won't go any further because I know that's that's pushing it. But when when you're seeing all of that, okay, now we've heard it so much that it just it got to where it's just another line of people that they're killing. I realized by that, that's what happens to us. You, you hear words. There are words that I won't even use right now with, you know, in a mixed crowd like this. But, but it's like you hear, you hear words in the news, and it's like, oh, man, there's just something that just... But then, but then you hear it, and you hear it. And, and it's a topic that, you know, years ago, you would have never discussed the topic. But now it's, it's just in your face. It's just continual. And that's what happens to us. And our minds can be conformed to this world. And God's Word must be the renovator of our mind. It's the renewing of our mind and the renovating of our mind that's so important. It's that subtle mind conditioning of the world around us. And it is a literal raging battle inside our minds. 
There, there's just different things that come against our mind. And there are some people that, that have thought the wrong way so long that they're convinced they cannot change. There, there are literally people that, that come to church all the time, but if you really got down to it, they've pretty much cut a deal with the enemy. I can go so far, but I know that I will never totally be able to get victory over this. And I think everyone needs to have a memory verse challenge of Luke 18, 27, when the Word said, And He said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I'm telling you, you can change. I'm not just talking about the sinful mind issues that we have. I'm also talking about the mind issues that are in us that has us convinced that we cannot be productive in the kingdom of God. That we cannot have homes that are directed by the power of God. Those thoughts are not of, of God. You say, well, but, I, you know, it's been so long and I've, I've been like this for so long. Are you breathing? If you're breathing, you can change. If you're breathing. Well, but you know what? Haven't you ever heard? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, number one, that's a lie. You, you know, you probably need to study real dog trainers. And they will tell you that, that that's a lie. And then we understand there the power of cliche theology. That, that we reach into this world and, and we just buy into cliches. And we make them theology. We had better make sure that our theology only comes from the Word of God and not some family cliche or my daddy always said or my grandpa always said or, well, I tell you, Uncle so-and-so, he was a wise man and, and, he, and he always said, well, God love your daddy and God love your grandpa and God love uncle and aunt, whoever. But if what they're saying is not coming out of the Word of God, then love them, but obey this. Yeah. Cliché theology, do not allow cliché theology in your life. There's just some, you know, decent thoughts, but that doesn't mean that we need to take those as a part of our lives. And our minds must be continually renewed, renewed daily. It's, it's our daily mind choices. It's choices that we make in our mind. It's will I believe? Will I look to Him? Will I think on good things? Will I eliminate the negative things that are coming into my mind? There, there, is, there is something that, that is driving me, and it's this. The enemy is is fooling the church in a way that it's relegating the apostolic church to a Sunday drug. It's like people are thinking during the week, if we can just get to church, then, then I, can, I can feel the power of God and I can make it one more week. Listen, I know there are times when things happen in our life when it's just if we can just get there and feel the power of God. I got that. Though I have had those weeks. But just to continually think that it's come to church and repent and go back out and sin and, and live on that level and come back and repent. If I can just get back and repent, you, you just don't have to live like that. You can believe God did not robe himself in flesh and come down and die on a cross that, that you could just struggle in sin Monday through Saturday to come and get a little drug on Sunday morning. If we decide that the power of God, that we're going to allow the power of God and we're going to position ourselves every day. We're going to wake up in the morning saying, God, it's me and you today. That, that's what we're going to do. It's me and you today. And it's me and your word. And it's me and your spirit. 
And I, and I might be working a job to where I hear dirty jokes. And, and I might be working a job where I hear people cussing like crazy. I know what that's like. My father-in-law was a Ford dealer, and I worked back <coughs> excuse me, in the parts department. My goodness, those mechanics at Ken Brady Ford, they didn't know that you could just say, I need a carburetor. <laughs> I need... No, they didn't know that. They needed a blankety blank 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 carburetor. They, I mean, I heard so many cuss words every day that it was like I had to be careful at home. I couldn't help that. I couldn't help what I heard, but I could help what I said. We can't help sometimes what we see, but we can help what we choose to see. We can't help sometimes what we hear, but we can help what we choose to hear. And so when we walk out of this church on Sunday morning and we say, I'm not dialing back into that mess. I'm dialing into heaven. It's like we got two dials in our life and we control. You're going to dial into hell, you're going to dial into heaven. You, you got the power. What are you going to set your wavelength to to bring down? And when you decide, I'm not just going to feel the presence of God here, I'm going to position myself Every morning, I'm going to wake up saying, God, it's me and you. It's a better way to live. That, that's all I'm saying. There is a better way to live. Will I think on good things? Will I be renewed daily in my mind? What will I allow to be in my mind and dominate my thinking? That person just aggravates us. Have you ever been driving down the road having a conversation with so, telling somebody off and you were the only one in the car? I have. I mean, I'm driving down the road and then I'm going to say this and then I act like they said that, then I'm going to say this and they're saying that. And I'm, I mean, it's kind of like that story where this guy had a flat tire and he gets out and uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a cool story. He, he, get, he gets out, and he's walking up to this house, and he needs to ask for a jack to jack his car up, and he gets in his mind. They, they don't want me. They're not going to want me to bother them. They're, they're not going to want to loan me that jack. And he walks in, he knocks on the door, and they open the door, and before they had a chance to say anything, he looked at him and said, Keep your old jack. I didn't want it anyway. <laughs> the mind. The mind. Having those, boy, well, they're going to say this, then I'm going to say that. And then when they say this, I'm going to say that. I didn't need to do I know I'm the only one because I'm weird and you're not. But 1 Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins. The loins are the reproductive parts. Gird up the loins of your what? Your mind. Because our thoughts reproduce thoughts. Be sober and hope to the end of, of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4 and 8. If, you, if we could lock into this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good of a good report, if there be virtue and praise, think on these things. Our mind, that's, that's what we're supposed to be thinking about. And when we, when we do, it will change everything. So in the rest of the time that I have tonight, let's, let's zero in on this mind of Christ. Philippians 2, 5-9. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, he was saying, let, choose this. It's your choice. You have to allow this mind. His, his word is not saying, I'm going to take over your mind. I'm going to force you to think like this. He's saying, let this mind be in you. Allow it. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He showed us how to avoid the trap of reputation. The trap of it. 
He made himself of no reputation. In other words, he emptied himself out. Jesus is saying, let this mind be in you. Now I'm going to tell you what the mind is. Empty yourself out. Jesus was not full of himself. He showed the power of selflessness. And our reputation and our image must not be our focus. His reputation through us must be the focus. So we need to quit trying to be a big deal. And we need to start being a God deal. In this day and time, it's about self-image. It's about self-promotion. It, it's, it's about, you know, be better than anybody else and blow away the, the competition. But self-image and self-focus eliminates fulfillment, peace, and joy. You cannot be focused on yourself primarily and have peace. You cannot be primarily focused on yourself and be fulfilled. There's absolutely no way. So you have that self-image that needs to be poured out. And then you've got family image. There are many families that are more focused on their name being honored than the name of Jesus being honored through their family. There are many families that are more focused on their last name and how it is projected than the name of Jesus. And then there's the church image, and there can be as much competition between churches across town as high school football teams across town. We're not seeking to outperform any other church. Apostolic Truth Church is not in competition with not one other church in Appleton. We're not seeking to outperform them. We're seeking to please God. That's what we're seeking to do. What we're seeking to do at ATC is create an atmosphere that draws Him and draws them so we can let him and them connect. And so our focus on this campus is we entertain God and we entertain people to where there can be a connection between God and people. Because if the connection does not happen between God and people, we'll never go to the next level because we don't have the power to take anything to the next level. We can position ourselves in order to go to the next level. Jesus Christ intends to be the focus of our lives, our families, our churches. And he will not coexist with us on the throne of our lives. And Jesus does not come to help us do better what we've already decided to do. But Jesus comes to take over. He comes to set a new agenda. You know, you, you've heard, I may have said last time I was here, that license plate, you know, God is our co-pilot. That's cute, but it's just wrong. God is not anybody's co-anything. He's not your co-pilot. The reason why a lot of people are in trouble is because they're, they're trying to get that co-pilot thing going with God. Yeah, me and God, we both drive this thing. Me, I'm, I'm up there with God. Yeah, me, me and God. Me and God. No, no. No, we, we're the passenger. Now, there's things that we have to do, but we've got to understand that, that God is not coming to empower us, to help us do better what we've already decided to do with our life. No, that's cute, but that's not the way it is. He comes to take over. Over. And so what we do is we empty ourselves out and we are filled with Him. And He made Himself of no reputation. And He took upon Him the form of a servant. And He was made in the likeness of men. Matthew twenty twenty eight. Here's where it gets really real for us. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Now, let, let's get this. 
the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And he was, he was saying this. This is his quote. Came not to be ministered unto. Jesus did not come to be ministered unto. That would be a revelation that would absolutely change us, change our lives. But what did he come to do? He came to minister and give his life a ransom for many. And so the mind of Christ was dominated by serving. Serving. We must have a servant's heart and spirit. If we don't, we're living life on such a lower level. You know, I see some great hyphen age uh, sitting here. And, and my, if, if you could grab this now. I mean, if you could get a hold of this now, it would save you. It saved you so much emotional mess in your life. It, it would literally, instead of going from ditch to ditch, you know, getting up on the road a little bit and landing back, no, 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 you, you'd just get up on the road. And you'd still have obstacles, but you wouldn't have to deal with not nearly the amount of things if you just realized, I, I didn't come to be ministered to. I came to minister. I, I'm, I'm going to serve. I'm, I'm going to serve. Well, people's going to take advantage of you. Right. Yeah, they are. They sure are. Because there's plenty of people that love standing around and watch other people serve. Absolutely. I can tell you that for sure, without a doubt. But you, you just serve. You just serve. I'm, I'm looking for ways to serve. Well, but... But, you know, I, you'll have to give up your man card in order to, to, to do that. No, Jesus didn't. No, Jesus didn't. He, he really didn't. I mean, Jesus stood there and got spit on and slapped and everything. And it, did it diminish his power? None, none, at, none at all. L let me tell you, if you're fighting oppression, I'm going to save you some money right here. Serve. If you're fighting depression, I'm going to save you some money right now. Serve. Serve. If, if you end up someday in the hospital, make it a point that every day that you're on that hospital bed, you're going to call at least one person and encourage them while you're in that hospital bed. We, we, don't, we don't have to take everything that we're taking. If we could understand the power of what Jesus did, and Jesus said, let this mind be in you. And the mind that I'm talking about is, is you empty yourself out and you serve. Serving changes our focus. And deciding how we will consistently serve is a vital life decision. This church needs your involvement. But you need to be involved in this church worse than this church needs your involvement. We, we, need, we need you involved in your gifting, whatever your gifting is. And, and I don't have time to preach on this. I can run a rabbit trail, but I won't, you know. And, and people compare and people complain. Well, I, you know, I can't do it like they can do it. Well, I can, I, you know, it's not as good as them. I, there's really nothing I can do. And what the enemy, the enemy tries to do, the enemy tries to convince us that what we have to offer is not worth offering. Because the enemy knows that when we start offering what we can then the power of God connects with that, and a principle of the Word of God connects with that. And that's the reason why Mr. Two Talent became four, Mr. Five Talent became ten, because that's the principle of God. You just start doing what you can do. Quit, quit trying to wait until, well, if this work out, that'll work out. Or, all right, no, no, you don't even wait on all that. It's roll up your sleeves, and what can I do? What can I do? There's no, well, there's some trash needs to be picked up. I'll start there. But hold on a second. I'm an executive. Good. You're an executive. Pick up the trash. You're, I mean, you're now the executive of the trash on the floor. It's, I mean, it's whatever. It's not, it's not about what needs done. It's just that something needs to be done, and I'm going to be a part of what God is doing, and I'm going to serve because I need to serve. 
I need to serve. Satan continually attempts to take these strong biblical principles and taint them with limited human understanding to keep people held back. And that's human reasoning, and that's carnal thinking, and that keeps us from authority and dominion. I want to tell you, I want to tell you church, please, please hear this. Your need and the ability to walk in authority and dominion, you're not separated from it. You just need to take the steps that you can take. God will never allow us, God will never put us in a place that we are cut off forever and we have, we have no option. There may be times when we've done all to do, all we can do is just stand and say, God, I don't really know what I'm doing next, but I'll tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not sitting down, and I'm not walking backwards. So I'm, I'll stand right here until I get my next step, but I'm not going to sit down, and I'm not going in reverse. Say, well, I'm, I'm all tied up. I can't do it. Keep your mind right. Keep speaking faith. As long as you can talk. Yes, life's not going good, but God is good. I got, I've got some struggles right now, but God is good. And it, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to, to just every now and then just reach in the Bible and say things like, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. As my days are, so will my strength be. I may not have strength for a week. I don't need strength for a week. I need strength for today. And his word says, as my days are, so will my strength be. God is with us. Some people just need to start quoting the Bible. Quit cussing and start quoting the Bible. Cussing's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. Is there anybody here that used to cuss and you know that cussing won't help you? Okay, yeah, we got to three, four, four of us sinners. Five, okay. It, it does not help. Getting mad, losing your cool. When you lose your cool, you lose more than your cool. You lose influence. Stop doing that. Just settle down and start, you know, whenever that starts rising up, start quoting scriptures. Well, I, you know, I just, I just lost. I, I gave them a piece of my mind. Now you don't have as much of your mind as you did have. Do you, know, do you know that it is physically proven, it is medically proven that the matter we get, the less blood flows through our brains? That is med that's the reason why people just get mad mad and do things that they would have never done. Why? They wasn't thinking. Why? Because they let themselves get into a place where the blood wasn't even flowing through their brain. It's like sometimes when you look at somebody and say, hey, you really need to stop because you're losing blood. <laughs> you, you're losing blood up there. Now I've gone to meddling. Let's get back to this. The world measures a man by how many serve him. But heaven's yardstick measures a man by how many are served by him. And never think that serving makes you less. Serving makes us more. Serving is, is what makes it all go. Serving is what Jesus did. Jesus went about serving. That's what he did. He went about serving. And we're not, our lives are not going to be what they could be until we understand this. We've got to have his mind, and his mind is empty yourself out and serve. And now here it is, and this may get, get real tough, but it's still the truth. And serving begins at home. Because what I really am, I am at home. I don't know what opinion you have of me now. I'm sitting there preaching and teaching, whatever you're calling it. But I'll tell you, you don't know me. Melanie knows me. Kendra and Brayden know me. Just like the people that are on the pew by you know you. Serving begins at home. And I promise you, we could serve a lot of confusion out of our homes. We could serve a lot of confusion out of our homes. There is one statement that would change our homes. What can I do to help you? 
Now, some of you may need to have some, if you decide to do this, you might need to have some smelling salt <laughs> in your pocket because whoever it is that you ask, they may faint. Don't, don't, ask, don't ask somebody that. Ask them that if they're standing near a bed because then when they fall, it'd be like a soft landing and they, they, they won't hit the floor. What can I do to help you? Give some of your parents a chance to faint. What, what can I do to help you? Verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And humility precedes power. He brought himself low. He abased himself. He humiliated himself. And humility is a powerful principle, for it opens the door to grace. James 4, 6, and 7, God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud. Now, I'm not going to be talking much longer here, but let's get this. God opposes the proud. I don't want Brother Soto to be against me. I don't, you know, I, I definitely don't want CJ to be against me. I have noticed he could probably whip me. Uh, just gifts of the Spirit there and looking at him and looking at me. I don't, I don't want... Anybody here opposing me, but let's get this thing straight now. God. God. God? God? Anybody want to go up against God? Got any takers? Speak worlds into existence, and, and well, that, that enemy's coming. We'll just part the Red Sea. Part. Okay, y'all come on then. Okay, you're gone. Uh, just, I mean, I mean, God. God, uh, this army needs to be taken out, no problem at all. The stars will fight against uh, Sisera, that's no problem. Uh, we'll just do hailstones right there. I'll send an angel and wipe out how many thousands. No, God, God. Do we have that? God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's humble and submit, then bind Satan in the name of Jesus. Listen, save your breath, quit yelling in the name of Jesus and binding Satan if you're not submitted to God. Just save your time and, and save your oxygen. Because you can scream that all you want, but we must be submitted to God. If we submit ourselves to God, then we can resist the devil and he will flee from us. So we got to take this step. And he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was obedient. And obedience is power. Not only death, but the death of the cross. And the cross speaks of the plan of redemption for mankind. And we must die to self for the eternal benefit of others. He willingly died that we might live. He took his eyes off himself and saw lost humanity. And he served them by the cross to the power of the cross. He was a servant in the truest sense, even obedient unto death. And so he says, let this mind be in you. Let this mind. So when we're talking about having the mind of Christ, we're talking about making ourselves of no reputation. It's now not going to be about our individual reputation, our family reputation, or our church. It's going to be bringing His name to reputation. It's going to be bringing His name to honor. We're going to do that individually. We're going to, our family, this church, is just seeking to bring honor to Jesus Christ. It's, it's not about our reputation. And, and we are going to serve. We're going to serve. We're going to look for ways to serve. I mean, we're going to go about our day looking for ways to serve, and we're going to start serving each other in our homes. I'm just talking about the mind of Christ. And, and we're going to be obedient. We're going to be obedient even to the death. Even to the death. Now, that's the only way we can have the mind of Christ. But I can tell you this. For people that will pursue the mind of Christ, everything changes. Everything. The things that just frustrate you to no end, oh, that, that, that changes. 
I mean, I look back in my life and things that used to just get me all worked up. Now it's like next. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to stay on that level. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. And I, and I intend that if I live to be 57, that, that things that bug me at 56 won't bug me as bad at 57 if I, learn, if I live to be 58. Because I'm not, I'm not quitting. I've got to have that mind. I've got, I am pursuing the mind of Christ. I'm not just standing up here giving a speech about it. I'm pursuing the mind of Christ. And in my pursuit for the mind of Christ, I can't tell you how much better life is. Because if it's something that's going to come in and start defiling inside, you say, well, you know, do you ever uh, have to work against this or work against that? Every day. Every day. There's a reason why I get up every morning, and I, I am, if y'all do music at the end, we're fixing to pray. If you do music, you can come up here. But this, but this is the reason why I get up every morning. I've already told you at one time uh, that I've trained myself that my first waking thought is how big God is, and I challenge you to do that. You ought to do that. And I'm quoting Scripture in my mind when I first get out of bed and all that. Well, several months ago, something else came to me that you, you need to surrender yourself. You need to surrender yourself. So now I'm doing that, and, and I will, I mean, I won't be out of bed five minutes before I'm somewhere. Sometimes if it's a hotel room, it's on a towel in the bathroom. That becomes my traveling office now at times. And I'm down there, but I'm going to get on my knees, and I'm going to put my head on the floor. And I'm going to tell God, I surrender my mind, and we're going to talk about my mind. And then I'm going to come, because there's other people in other parts of the world, they do a lot of this bending and putting their head on the floor. Well, there's something very powerful to that. You ought to try that if you can. Now, if you can't physically do it, then I understand. But if you can, you ought to at least give it a try. Because when you're down surrendering, I surrender my mind, and we pray about my mind. And I, I surrender my, uh, my heart, and, and we, we pray about my heart. I'm talking about every morning. And then we, I, I surrender my spirit, and then I get on down, I surrender my eyes, and then I surrender my ears, and then I surrender my mouth. And, and I mean, there, there, there's some... There, there's some head going to the floor because I, I, I surrender my, my beat. I surrender my hands. I surrender my feet. I surrender my resources. I surrender it. I'm going to start surrendering. I mean, he, he did say, after this manner, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be it, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And we need a revelation of thy, not my. And I, there, I, I'm just saying this. There's a better way to live. I'm just saying, pursue the mind of Christ. And you can't imagine how your life will change. As we stand together right now, if you would, if you would like to pursue the mind of Christ like you never have, would you just walk forward? I, I'd like for us to pray before we leave tonight. I, I want to I just want to pursue his mind. As you pursue his mind, there will be things that I repeat myself now that used to just really mess you up that you'll start noticing that it's just not even worth letting you get messed up. It's just not worth it anymore. You you realize as you pursue the mind of Christ, you realize that just doesn't really matter. In the lens of eternity, that doesn't matter. I can either put my emotion into that, or I can put my emotion into something positive, and I'm going to move forward. If that's you, why don't you close your eyes right now and lift your hands to heaven. And why don't you just start talking to God about, God, I want your mind. All over this sanctuary, I want your mind. I want your mind. I've got to have your mind. I want your mind. 
God, forgive us of things that, that we have willingly brought into our minds. Forgive us, God. God, forgive us of things that, that, are, that have defiled our minds. God, I'm believing, I'm believing that you're going to empower some people to go home tonight and get rid of some things that, that is in their world. There may be things that need to get rid of in their vehicles or maybe erased off of smartphones or, or what, whatever, however it's coming in. However it's coming in. I'm asking you to deal with people right now, God. Deal with people right now. Don't, don't let this just be a quick prayer. Not, not just a quick prayer. I'm praying that, that you'll do a work right now, God, in our minds. Some things are very entrenched, and we've got to have your help. If there are things in your mind that's entrenched in your mind, don't try to do this on your own. Talk to God right now and ask God to empower you. Empower me, God. Empower me, God. There are things that are defiling my mind. I'm praying for your power. Talk to God about it right now. My mind, my mind, my mind. God, I want to have I want to have the mind of Christ. I want to have the mind of Christ. Let the Spirit of God talk to you right now and give you direction. Let the Spirit of God talk to you right now and give you direction. The things you need to shut down. Things you need to move away from. To have the mind of Christ. God's empowering right now. His Spirit is here. Accept His power.